Okay, so can you all see my balsamic? All right, cool. So the first thing I did um, is I pasted my requirements. So I had written down my own user requirements or user stories, sorry, that I shared with you. Now what I'm gonna do is put them into a text box just so that I can look at them. So here I typed into the um, search box text, text area shows up. So I can then click that and now here's my text. When I double click this, it allows me to paste all the text that I got about my user stories in there. And now I've got these to look at. All right. So I just have this here in order that I can always see the functions that I want to put in and the user stories that I want for the customers that I want to serve. I can have that front of mind all the time. Okay, so I would encourage you all to also do the same uh, with yours. All right, so all the user stories that you just wrote down, you might as well just put that into your wireframe so that you've got it and you, you can check them out. The other thing that I'd like you to share is, or, or do, is share your wireframe with me. All right, that way I can take a look at it and I can provide you with feedback as you progress. So all you have to do is share and then share it with, I'm gonna type it on the chat, my email, W-R-A-A-S-C-H at kgi.edu. Okay, for some reason it says it's unavailable, probably because I have a million applications running right now between this and Zoom. Um, but anyway, that's something that I want you all to do um, sometime between now and next week when, when we do the presentation. So that way I can provide you all with some pre-feedback before you, you turn it in, okay? So the first thing that I'm going to want to do is figure out, and this is something that you all will have to assess individually, is your application going to be desktop or mobile? This is a very big question, right? Do I want this to be something that can fit on a big laptop screen or is it something that I need to be able to fit in the palm of the hand? The reason why this is so important is because it really is going to determine the entire framework through which you design your application. Um, there's a whole concept of mobile first versus you know, desktop first. You wanna figure out, is your application mobile first or desktop first, right? So for instance, I, I would say probably um, Kevin's might be mobile first, right? I don't wanna give any answers. You can do whatever you want. But when I pictured the story, Kevin, that you were telling me, I pictured, okay, well, this might be something on the phone because the athlete wants to see their progress in real time without having to log in on their computer. Um, I might picture, well, actually, let me throw it out to you all. Does anyone have an idea that they think wouldn't work well on the phone or, or maybe would be better off on a computer? I know these days everything's on the phone. No one? Okay. <laughs> so, so we'll go mobile first then. Uh, I'll, I'll show you on mobile then for mine. So I'm going to call this mobile because it's going to be the mobile version of my app. Now to create a new frame, you click this plus sign on the upper left. And I'm going to call this desktop just so that I've got a way to look at both. Now, if yours is mobile first, I'm not going to require that you have a different desktop and different mobile version for each. Um, just focus on one, but I want to show you for completeness what they look like. So here's something I would drag for the desktop. And I got to figure out how big I want it. So these numbers that pop up as I enlarge and shrink the, the browser window are pixels. Now, in general, a desktop is going to be about a thousand pixels wide. So just to help you um, calibrate that. And then mobile is about half that, right? So usually actually a little bit more than half, like, uh, or less than half, sorry, like 400 pixels. So here's basically what a browser window might look like. Then I could put things like, uh, say, headers, right? I could put like home. 
about us, maybe blog or, or something like that, right? So that's an example of what a desktop page might look like. Now, because we're gonna focus on mobile, I'll uh, put more of my effort into here. So I'm gonna quick add because I don't see it here and I don't like to browse, but you can if you like to browse. I just type mobile. Okay, here's, oh, actually, this was not what I wanted. I didn't want this mobile phone. So instead I'm gonna look for, uh, here, smartphone. All right, so here's my canvas basically for a smartphone. I'm gonna make this a larger phone just so it's easier to work with. And now I get to start building my app. So any questions? Has everyone gotten this far with your own app? Ooh, I think I might have lost someone. Well, hopefully they're able to get back. Um, in any case, if, if you end up having any internet problems, uh, totally understandable, I'll end up posting this on YouTube so you have all the information to follow along. I'll also post some resources that enable you to follow along with other people that have used Balsamic to create a wireframe. Okay, so I'm gonna do this for WeHealth. One cool thing about Balsamic is that not only can you use their inputted images, but you can also upload your own. So with WeHealth, I already have a logo and I kinda of wanna use it. So I'm going to do that. I'm just gonna open my logos. And now one cool thing that you can do here is just drag it onto the screen. It's gonna import and now I got my logo. So super simple, just had to drag the logo onto the screen and now I've got it and I can put it onto my phone. So I wanna put the heart on the upper left just so that everyone knows, hey, this is the WeHealth logo. And now I'm gonna to wanna to put some sort of nav bar here, right? So, cause I'm lazy and I don't like to look for things, I'm just gonna type nav bar. Okay, here's a link bar. So I wanna think about what different categories do I want for my nav bar? Okay, well definitely home, but maybe I wanna make this link to home. So I don't need home here. So instead, maybe I'm gonna put, okay, well, I want them to know who we are, so about us, because we health runs, remember I was talking about the, what the influencers want, influencers want, they want to know that there's a campaign specifically for them. So I'll put something like causes to represent each of those campaigns. Um, maybe we wanna have a blog and then a contact us. All right, so here's my nav bar. Okay, so now all of a sudden I've got my logo as well as my nav bar to help different patients um, navigate around the website. Okay, now maybe I also want to break down the causes. So what I would do, and the, the best way to, to show this is to create a vertical drop down, right? So, all right, we can do this a quarter. Let's do the vertical tabs. So maybe within the causes, I wanna have a, oh, and by the way, whenever I insert these, they typically have pre-populated information. Like here it says first tab, second tab, third tab. And then when I double click, it allows me to change that. So let's say the first thing I, I wanna do something for COVID-19 as a cause. I wanna do something for diabetes as a cause. Maybe something for uh, veteran health and then uh, something for rare disease, right? So I did that and now these update. And now to show that this is something that I wanna associate with causes, what I'll do is I'll add an arrow. 
that basically points from causes to that vertical thing, okay? Now I'd like this arrow to be one way, so I'm gonna click it and then I can unclick, oops, not that one, this one, okay? So I unclicked the right arrow and now is pointing from causes to this dropdown, okay? So this is just communicating through the wireframe. Hey, when that user clicks causes, they're gonna, there's gonna be a dropdown that enables them to choose these different causes, okay? Does that make sense? This is kind of the basics of how a nav bar might work on your particular wireframe for the app. Okay, now maybe I want a header. So one thing I can do is I can type image in the quick add and then it'll just give me a uh, sort of a, a hold or a stopper, right? So here's basically telling me, put an image here. I don't wanna deal with the design yet, so I'm not gonna do it. I'm just gonna leave this X here, but it tells everyone, hey, there's gonna be an image right here that's gonna show something around my logo or you know whatever I want the users who arrive here to actually see, okay? So after that, I want to maybe have a another text input or text block of text. So maybe I don't care what this says for the purposes of the wireframe. So I can just do a click text, right? There's this block of text, which just kind of gives you gibberish. All right, now let's put a button. Okay, so type button. Drag that down here. And now what do I want my button to say? Well, if you remember back in the user story, I wanted patients to be able to find resources for them based on their needs. So why don't we call this find health resources? All right, so I clicked the button, that popped up, then I typed what I wanted it to say. Now, anytime you put a button, you need to uh, show within the wireframe what that button actually does. I'm gonna zoom in just so you can see a little bit more clearly. And the way you do that is the same way we did with the drop down menu. So use these arrows that kind of point out of the main screen to instruct whoever's looking at the wireframe to see, okay, well, once this happens, it's gonna go to something new. In this case, it's actually gonna to go to a whole new screen. So I'm gonna actually create another phone and put it right next to this phone. One other cool thing about Balsamic is that it sort of, you can see these guidelines, right? So it matches and snaps to grid based on what, um, what's already around. So if I need something to be centered or I need two things to be aligned, it automatically allows me to do that. So here they're not aligned, but let's say I want them aligned. And I kind of go until I see those lines pop up right here, okay? All right, so I mentioned I've got this button and I want that to go to a new screen. So I'm gonna create another arrow. I could add it through the quick add, just typing arrow, right? or I could just take this existing arrow, copy using command C and then paste. So copy and paste as you would with the commands on any other program. Okay, so I'm gonna show this, that once I click this, it's gonna to go to this screen. Now on this screen, we're gonna have the screener, right? So I might put a title in, this says a big title as default. So screener. Now, oh, I don't want another title. Now here I just want text. So how about um, paragraph of text? Now we say 
what kind of resource are you looking for, right? So super generic, right? I'm not trying to think, overthink it too much. I just want to ask them a very simple question um, to get them to answer it. Now, maybe I want to give them choices, right? So let's see what happens if I type radio, right? So radio buttons are a good way to show multiple choice. All right. So maybe this radio button says something like um, clinician for my disease. Now I'm going to copy and paste to make another one. Maybe the next one says um, meet patients like me. All right. And let's make one more. That says maybe a diagnosis. Oh, and then one more. Let's not forget clinical trials because that was the whole point of the app to begin with. All right, so now we know from here that once they click Find Health Resources, they're going to go to another screen that then enables them to answer questions that might lead to a match. Okay. And let's say, so I want to show progress as an example. So let me, I typed progress into the quick ad and turns out they've got a progress bar. So maybe I just want the user to be able to see how far they are in the survey so that they don't get bored or intimidated. Okay, another thing I can do with this, when I click the progress bar, and this goes for anything that I might insert into my wireframe. When I click that inserted object, I can then do things with the style. So let's say I don't want it to be solid, but I want it to be striped. Then I can do that, right? Or if I want it to be standard or narrow, I can do all of that. Let's say I want the value to be at like 80%. I can show that. So this is all possible. And maybe just to show a little bit about what that means, under here, I want to say something like question one of, or let's say four of five. Okay. All right, so here's an example of what the screener might look like. And, you know, this only took, what, five minutes to create this screener would take much, much, much longer to actually create that via code. So now I've got something that I can take to patients and say, hey, do you like this? Do you like the progress bar? Do you like the way that the questions are lined up? And then they can give you feedback before you put all of the effort in of actually coding it in. Okay, so this might be a good point for me to ask if anyone has any questions before I move forward. I don't wanna to move too fast. Is everyone able to add kind of their own version of this right now? Or are you doing that? I'm a little bit concerned that um, having all these programs open with the Zoom and the, the balsamic might overload your computers. So, um, but it sounds like everyone's okay. No one's computer is overloading. If you, if you need to, um, you know, just let me know. You, you could maybe turn off your video or something if your, your computer is, sounds like it's about to take off. Okay, so I mentioned this screener, but I also mentioned that I wanted their answers to the screener to lead to a clinical trial or some study that they might match with. So let's see what happens when they do that. Or let's at least illustrate it through this wireframe. Okay, so I'm gonna create another phone screen. So I typed phone into quick ad. I like to use the smart, or I had been using the smartphone, but I could use the iPhone. Doesn't really matter. They all look the same. Um, so let's just use the iPhone for this. Okay, so now I wanna show what happens when I've matched. And actually one thing that I probably should have written 
is um, can I, I could make a comment here. So I just entered comment into the quick ad and now I've got this comment. So I could say here, this is my patient screener after clicking find a resource button. So it's really nice to be able to annotate, right? Because when you're doing this, especially when you're working with a team, it might not be as clear to someone else what you're getting at with these arrows. So you can use these little comment stickies to illustrate to whoever you're working with what you are getting at. So now I wanna see when a patient matches eligibility criteria for a clinical trial. All right, so quick ad, I'm gonna go back to title. And so they've matched. So why don't we say something like, congrats, we found a match. You know what, the title does not wanna go in two lines. So why don't we say congrats on the big title. And this is actually an opportunity for us to then create a subtitle. So we got congrats on the top line in big font. And then we've got we found a match and subtitle font below, okay? Now I'm typing image because maybe I want to show some image about the clinical trial right below that. And then how about just a block of random text because I don't know what the heck the clinical trial actually wants to say. So we'll just make this generic as possible. And then if we're maybe using this, to user test with a particular clinical trial sponsor, customer, we can then just show, hey, this is what it'll look like. And then we can implement your IRB approved information along with an image along. And so then they don't get confused by maybe some generic image you said uh, that you have there. Instead, you're able to um, let their imagination run of what they would wanna put there, okay? <clears throat> Now we're, we're gonna need some buttons, right? So once they've actually matched, how do we enable them to send their contact information to the sponsor? So I'm gonna type input. Now here's the text input here. And I wanna put, um, What do I want? I want their name. Okay, now I'm highlighting both, copying and pasting, so I don't have to do that over again. Maybe I want their email. Highlight both, copy and paste. And then their phone, okay? And so, then I have a button, maybe that says submit, copy and paste that, create a button next to it that says cancel if they're not interested. Right, and I do believe I can even change the color. So when I click the submit button, let's say I wanna make that green. 
So now it's sort of guiding the user to clicking the button that we really want them to click, which is submit. Right? If you remember from our user experience lecture, it's nice to guide them towards the actions that you actually want them to perform. Okay, so I'm just gonna center that. All right, so now we actually have a nice story. We've got our homepage. We're saying, okay, well, there's also a lot of different campaigns. And then if they wanna find health resources, they click the button, then they take a screener. The screener tells them the progress they've made. And then based on their criteria, we match them. And then they can submit their contact information here. So let's go back to our user stories. So we've said, as a patient, I want to be able to see personalized clinical options that I can get the best possible care. I want categorized patient resources in an eligibility screener. So we have built here the eligibility screener, but we haven't built the resources yet. So let's do that. All right. So let's try this menu. Oh no, not this menu, sorry. Um, why don't we actually try a search? So we've got a search bar right here. And then let's actually say I wanna put a filter in too. So I got a search bar and a filter. Now, I actually don't like the size of this filter. So I'm gonna click it and then change it to be more in line with the search bar. Okay, now when I type into the search, I wanna be able to bring health resources up here. So let's show an example of what that might look like. So maybe these are my search results. And let's say one of them might be, um, you know, Dr. Jones. Uh, let's say this is for COVID, right? So infectious disease practice. And another might be, um, you know, latest infection data. Another might be essential COVID-19 info. Another might be uh, crowdsourcing initiatives, right? Because we know that a lot of people have been crowdsourcing PPE, things like that. So let's say that I've got these different categories. Oops. Actually, you know what? We can make these a part of So let's call these categories actually. Okay, so that's categories that maybe come from this filter. So here what I'm saying is, okay, well, I want to be able to search, but I also want them to be able to choose categories and then display below, um, you know, whatever some of those ideas might be. And let's say that I want, or some of those resources might be, and let's say that I want the resources to be a bunch of pictures, right? Say I want it to look kind of like Pinterest or something. 
So when I do this search or I do this filter, they come out all nice like this. All right, so now I've satisfied the categorized patient resources, the eligibility screener, clinical trial information, matching patients, referring contact info. So I've done all that. Now, the only thing left is sort of this as an influencer, I want these tools. But you know what I said, that was the hardest thing anyway. So I'm probably not gonna create a wireframe for that in the span of 30 minutes like I did just now. But I think you can see what can be accomplished in a short amount of time through wireframing. I have a question on how you do you decide, I guess, depending on what your idea is, when to put like a sub menu drop down, when to put categories and things like that. How so, you, yeah, it, it's a really good question. And I think it all comes down to the user story. So you want it to be as simple as possible. Um, you know, with the sub menu drop down, the reason why I decided I wanted that is because with a horizontal navigation bar like this you can only fit really like especially on mobile you can only fit like four different categories but i knew that i wanted to have multiple causes right to to help with these influencers right because the influencers i put as part of their story they wanted campaigns for specific causes so because i knew i wanted to represent several different causes I knew that I couldn't fit them here. Therefore, I had to make sort of a larger category of causes that then drop down into these other causes. Does that make sense? So it's sort of, we have a certain amount of content that we need to include in order to fulfill the user stories that we've created. And then sometimes you just can't fit it onto a phone. And, and that's where the wireframes can actually be really helpful because you can get a little bit of a dose of reality about what can actually fit on the phone screen and what needs to maybe be filtered or using a search bar or, or a drop down. There's a lot of different tools that you've seen with the apps that you use that might um, enable you to do that. Another example might be, for instance, uh, you know, Zaid's uh, VR idea of, of having different VR solutions for mental health, um, but maybe there's different categories within that, right? So let's say he's got a hundred different videos that he thinks he wants to include, but he doesn't want to fit that all on one phone because that'd be, you'd end up scrolling for several minutes just to find the video you want. So he decides he wants filter categories of maybe here his categories might be something along the lines of, um, you know, like, uh, socializing, you know, therapy or something. And then another thing might be um, educational. Another might be, uh, you know, um, telemedicine, doctor checkups, right? So there's all, all, all sorts of different things that he might come up with based on what he feels the needs of his uh, customers are. Does that answer your question, Derek? Yeah, sort of. It's just when following you, it was a little difficult because we're trying to make it like, I guess, our own idea as well, but mm -hmm. then it might necessarily relate to what your setup was. So, that's yeah. why, it's so let, why don't we experiment with a couple ideas? So Derek, what in particular, um, in particularly, are you trying to, to do? What, what screen might you be working on that you, you might be stuck on? Um, for me, I guess... It's like a search engine, but then a search engine that pops up multiple suggestions, but then those suggestions are links to another page dedicated to that one item. Mm -hmm. So like say I searched up a word and then it's possibly two different things, one relating to like a medication or say one relating to some sort of like lung disease you would have like all those suggestions pop up and then you'd click one and then that would take you to another page and things like that. So something with, I guess, not really a sub menu drop down, but something of the same thing where you, you search something and it gives you a bunch of suggestions and it, you can click on it and stuff like that. Sure. So why don't we do 
class ideas. So I'll create a frame called class ideas. And Derek, would yours be mobile or desktop? Mobile, for sure mobile. <laughs> All right, so let's put an iPhone here. Now you mentioned there'd be a search bar, right? And that's all I really have for mine right now, is just the search bar. Okay, so we've got search box. I put that here. Mm -hmm. And now you're gonna have results. And would those results be more text or images? That I haven't really- a table. I'm a proponent of less is more. So maybe just word, like really aesthetic looking words as opposed to having, clearing it with like, a picture and like a small description, you know? Sure, sure. So, you know, I, I don't know exactly what that would look like, um, but let's, let's browse a little bit, okay? So we want, uh, could it be containers? Probably not, no, but maybe forms. Oh, how about this checkbox thing? Well, you know, this is a start, right? So this is probably not what you're looking for, but it can at least be a placeholder while you look for something that you like better. And then you mentioned some like what some of them might be, right? So what? Or like I was, I was thinking like a list of suggestions pop up. Mm -hmm. Or in this case, I would use that form or that, I'm not sure what, what was it, what it was again that you clicked? Was it checkbox? Yeah, this is checkbox, which might not be the right one, but. Yeah. But that actually looks really good for an option for like a filter maybe. Okay, okay so let's, let's do that then. So this might be a filter. Okay, so you can what would some of the categories be? It would be like medication or maybe um, medical condition, things like that. Mm -hmm. Could be like, uh, that's, all, that's all I can think about right now, honestly. Okay, cool. So why yeah. don't we just do those two for now. All right, so that way, and then somehow we gotta tell the user what it looks like. So I'm gonna type filter into the quick add. Mm -hmm. This way the user knows that it's a filter. All right. And then we've got a list of results that you're looking to put in, right? Um, How it either takes you to, either drops down on the bottom or takes you to another page full of results or suggested results. So one, here's one accordion, right? And, and again, this is the sort of thing where you don't have to know what it is, but just sort of drag it in and see how it looks. Okay. Uh, so maybe accordion is what you want. And then you get this list. And then when you click on item one, it shows an image, right? So I'm gonna click image in the quick ad and then put that here. Oh, okay. You see, so this yeah. is, all thinking out loud, who knows if this is the right way to do it, but maybe it'd be like this. And then when you click image one, that image shows up, you click item two, the other image shows up. Mm -hmm. And then you mentioned that you also wanted to have this, when you click on one. Yeah, it takes you to like a dedicated page on go just- to a dedicated page, right? And then what would that page look like? Um, I'm thinking the actual term, big bold, maybe a picture too, and then some sort of Sparknotes Wikipedia description on what it is. You know. Okay, so we'll just leave that as a big title. And then we're gonna put an image underneath a big title. And then I'm clicking text. So I'm gonna look for that block of text, right? That placeholder of gibberish. So maybe this is it. And then below this, you might wanna have them do something, right? So you might want to put buttons. Oops. So maybe this button says no. And then this button says yes. Cool. And then maybe I want to make the yes button green. And then just leave the no button white. Right? So that's an example of what it might look like. Um, and as you, you know, I, I would encourage all of you to just create the simplest possible wireframe at first and then add features on top of it once you've done that because there's nothing more intimidating than a blank page.
right? You, you want to at least have something there and then you can start to work with that to figure out ways to make it look better or to fit what you're looking for more. Okay. Thanks, Will. That helped a lot. <laughs> good, good. Safuni. Uh, I wanted to ask, like, uh, does Balsmic uh, web wireframe works only for the for the apps that requires internet only, or there's an option for those does who doesn't require internet? Um, you mean for, for ideas that require internet? No, no. Like I like. Here we are creating an app like which which requires like internet. What about like if I want to create a something that can maybe a, like a messenger or uh, messenger messenger. Or text, yeah, yeah, text oriented app that doesn't yeah. require internet. Can absolutely. I, I think it could absolutely be used for a, a messenger. So why don't we create that? Um, so I'm gonna create another frame and we're gonna call this messenger. All right. So I just copied what we have with Derek's, um, but then I'm going to delete it. <clears throat> All right, what would your messenger look like? Uh, because I was, I was thinking like something which, uh, like a text oriented, like when you, mm -hmm. like two people conversating with each other. So it's, I hope he, uh, hmm. So I think that would absolutely work, right? Um, you know, I, I typed message, right? And then I, I got this list of different things. So, you know, here might be someone who's typing and then um, let's see if we can find, you know, you might just, in your case, type an example conversation that happens, right? So, can I help you, right? And then maybe you respond. What what kind of messenger might this be used for? Uh, like uh, for the connection between the pharmaceutical, maybe with caregivers. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I can help you. Uh, maybe he wants to know the dosage for a certain kind of medicine. Okay, so then maybe they say, let me check, or something like that. So you might show what that text conversation looks like, but then of course your app should have more than just the messaging capabilities. So what might be some of the inputs that you might have from the patient in order to facilitate that conversation? Uh, I hope maybe for like, Maybe the, the provider will give you like option choose one, two or three and then. Okay. And then the, the one, two, three gives you an option of adding maybe patient information. Mm -hmm. and I then like that. Yeah, and then after giving patient information, then if the patient is maybe at the range of this age to this. Yeah. You can press one and then gives you the details of what you're looking for. Okay, so I'm gonna type radio again. So let's say I want radio buttons here. So this might be what they, you were talking about the one, two, three. So here they might say, um, what medications you know, are you taking? And then we might just have, you know, some different medications. Something like that. And then the, that patient would then submit, right? So I'm going to add a button, typing button here. Submit. So that's just an example of what that might look like. Um, and let's say I want to make this one, you know, a red button. Does that help, Sufuni? Yes, 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 thank you. Okay, great. Anyone else wanna run their ideas 
by the wireframe for some ideas of how to do it. I think the more different types of apps we can go through, I think the more helpful it will be for everyone as they progress with their wireframes. Uh, I just had a question. Yes. Um, so in terms of when we do the wireframe, how much of it like should we do? Because you had like all four of the links on top. But you only did like one drop down menu for mm -hmm. the quizzes and you didn't do anything for the about. Like do we sure. do all of those or just like one? Yeah, so it, that's a very good question. Um, and I would say let your patient stories dictate that. So I, I want you to think about what are the most important patient stories? What are some of the functions that would help solve those patient stories or you know, make those stories realities for those users? Um, and then once you've solved them all, then you're good to go. Now, I, I'm putting as a stipulation for the wireframe that you have like five different functional features, right? They're not functional, but just features, whether that's you know, a button, a tab, an image, or, or something like that. Five different things that you can show, but other than that, they don't all have to be functional. If the about us is not satisfying the main user story that I care about, then don't worry about it. Does that answer your question? Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> All right, any other questions or ideas that you wanna run through the wireframe? I kind of have like something put on my thing, but I don't know what else to do like us for like the next steps. Sure, sure. Um, would you mind sharing your screen? I can. Oh yeah, sure. Okay, let's see if, if I stop my share. Um, it says host disabled attendee screen sharing. Oh, okay. Um, are you able to uh, share it with me, the the document? Like, okay, like through email? Yeah. So if, if you do the uh, share on the upper right, Gotcha. It's still loading. I don't know why it's so slow. Uh, that was a problem with me too. Okay. So don't worry about that. Um, but if you all have any questions along the way, um, specific to, to your wireframe, um, just send me an email and then I can help take care of that during office hours. Um, and actually speaking of office hours, I created a poll. I wanted to make sure that everyone is able to, uh, to meet during the office hour times. So I've created a, a few options for office hours. I'm gonna launch them. If you all could choose uh, the two or three times that work best for you, then I will change up the office hours to match those times so that everyone is able to meet with me this week um, while you work on your wireframes. Okay, so I just launched it.
Okay, there's still a few who haven't voted. Um, but I'll just leave the poll open uh, and continue. Okay, so any other questions about wireframes or anyone have any ideas that they want to run through? Actually, yes. Yeah. So as far as uh, my idea was concerned, and by the way, thanks for elaborating on that, but as far as just the fundamentals are concerned, I don't know about you personally just thinking about the concepts, but I personally can't really see it applying in God, just in terms of a mobile application. Mm -hmm. So as far as a desktop is concerned, would you mind just running through yeah. an example of that just really quickly, just so we can kind of get an idea of that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so if we have the desktop, right? Um, with your idea, you know, I think the easiest way to kind of um, I guess illustrate what it might look like would be kind of like a YouTube, um, or at least that's the way I can think of, right? I'm sure there's plenty of other ways as well. Um, but let's say that we've got this for, um, you know, mental health VR videos, something like that. And then we might have an array of different videos that they can then choose from. And I might add a subtitle under each one. And so this might be video one. Let's add some of that text, block of text. So we've got some info here. All right, maybe there's a uh, like and dislike button. Oops, there we go. Something like that and then you just repeat that across the three you know maybe you want to put like a filter in and then you just specify you know what kind of filters might that look like so is that helpful about what it might look like on desktop absolutely cool yeah and you know there's not too much i think at the wire framing i i think the biggest danger is that you try to do too much so please don't do that. Just try to make it, think about what is the simplest possible way that you can solve that user story. Um, don't, don't put the fancy stuff in until later once you get really into the, the concept and you start to maybe do some user testing and, and getting feedback from those users about features that they might wanna see implemented. So at the beginning, before you've even talked to any users, just do the simplest possible implementation that addresses the user story that you've come up with. 